Hi, in this video, we're going to continue our discussion of generalized linear models. Uh, as a reminder, uh, this is one in a series of videos that we've been talking about the assumptions of linear models and how we can uh, relax those assumptions and that generalized linear models are specifically one way of assumption, uh, relaxing the assumption that the error in our models is normally distributed. The idea of a generalized linear model is, again, we want to retain our linear function under the hood as a way of relating our covariates to our response variable. We want to use alternative probability distributions in our likelihood. Um, in doing so, we need to account for the fact that many uh, non-Gaussian PDFs have uh, parameters that uh, cannot range over the plus or minus infinity range of that the mean of the normal can, but instead have range restrictions, such as the Wasson needing to be positive, the binomial needing to be between zero and one. Now, the standard solution to this is to use link functions. And as we talked about in the last lecture, uh, there's a number of link functions out there uh, for different uh, families of, of distributions. Um, and today, I specifically want to dive in in this lecture uh, to focus on the Poisson uh, regression model and talk uh, initially about the log link. <clears throat> so in the Poisson model, we are obviously assuming a Poisson error uh, in the regression model, and this is a, a common choice uh, to use when we're dealing with count data, uh, because Poisson specifically is a, is a zero bound count uh, distribution and uh, it is very naturally uh, a model of uh, discreetly counted data. It's designed to account for kind of the expected number of items or events in some unit space or some unit time. Uh, we're going to particularly want to make sure that we're using Poisson regression when we're dealing with uh, low count data where the normal assumption of the, the linear model can lead to a very poor approximation. Uh, I should note that the Poisson isn't the only option for uh, count data. We could easily generalize what we're doing here with the Poisson regression into a negative binomial regression, uh, though it's uh, often easier to find pre-existing functions to do a, a Poisson regression, and you might have to write a bit more code for the negative binomial. Um, I should note that it is, uh, you know, particularly flexible to alternative link functions because you just need a function uh, that is always positive. And also note that we've encountered the Wasson regression before as part of uh, lab four when we were dealing with the fecundity of pine trees in response to ambient and elevated uh, CO2 concentrations. So if we look at the Wasson model itself, we are going to assume uh, that our observed data y is distributed with some Poisson distribution with some expected value lambda, our mean. And the most common link is the log link. So we would say the log of lambda would uh, follow some linear model x beta. And so the log lambda equals x beta is our process model, and our y distributed as Poisson is our data model. And just as a reminder, when dealing with with uh, GLMs, uh, that it's not just the x beta that's part of the process model, but we would consider the log link part of the process model itself, turning this into a nonlinear model. Uh, so here's an example of uh, the sorts of data that are, are very common if we're fitting Poisson regression. We can see um, that our zero is taking only on, uh, sorry, that our y variable is only taking on integer values. It can be at zero, it can be at one, two, three, four, five, and, and so on. Um, and if we fit a linear model to this, you know, we would end up with residuals that are falling in discrete bins. Uh, we'd also find uh, that because we can't count negative things, the shape of this relationship uh, is not really well fit uh, by a straight line. So I'm going to first start talking about uh, GLMs from a maximum likelihood perspective, sorry, the Poisson GLM from maximum likelihood perspective, 
where there's basically two options if we're working in R. One is like we talked about in the last lecture when we were talking about uh, logistic regression, that there is uh, the GLM function in R. We can write out a formula using R standard LM um, formula syntax. But now we would say that the family is the Poisson. And here we're going to use the link, the log as the link function. Um, option two would be to code up the log likelihood ourselves, where we have a negative sum of the log of the Poisson likelihood, given some data, you know, the exponent of our process model. Um, and then we could optimize that using our, our standard maximum likelihood techniques we learned earlier in the semester, and then apply any of the uh, bootstrapping and Monte Carlo bootstrapping methods to end, get estimates of parameter uncertainty and Monte Carlo methods to get confidence intervals and predictive intervals around this model. And in fact, we've done a number of those steps again in the, the uh, lab four and then the follow up labs on that that expl explored how to uh, deal with the uncertainties in the parameters and models, specifically using a Poisson regression as an example. Um, it's worth noting that uh, there's a wide range of different link functions that could be used with the Poisson. If we look in R uh, and use the can GLM function, there's a, there's a few common ones as options, such as the log identity and square root. Um, identity is just uh, a lack of transformation. So if we look at uh, the, the log model, we get a nice kind of exponential shape. If we look at the identity, we just have a, a linear model which has the obvious uh, disadvantage that if I extrapolate uh, to x is much below uh, zero in this case, I'm going to predict a negative means, which would blow up the Poisson. And then the square root, which is somewhere in between uh, the linear model and, and the exponential of the log in, in the sense that it has some curvature, uh, but not nearly as much as the, the log. One thing I would note here is that um, we can actually use model selection metrics like AIC to actually choose between alternative link functions. So in this case, the uh, log link had the lowest AIC, and so we express the delta AIC relative to that. Uh, the identity model, so that linear model, is a much, much worse fit uh, than the log link. Uh, but the square root function, you know, is kind of one where it falls in that kind of two to five range where, you know, there's propensity of evidence in favor of the log model, but it's not, you know, we kind of consider that weak support. It's not particularly strong, but, you know, that, that uh, if we think back to the concept of power, that's one where additional data might uh, lead to uh, greater clarification as to which model is, is actually a better fit. Here we're showing the Poisson regression model in our graphical notation, showing that again, we're relating some x to some y's according to some betas. Uh, and then those betas have a prior. Now uh, we don't have um, a sigma here because there's no additional variance that is specified in the Poisson model. The Poisson's uh, variance is the same as its mean. So as, as the mean uh, of our linear model increases, the variability predicted by the Poisson will naturally increase as well. Uh, if we had done a negative binomial regression, we would have had to have an additional parameter that accounts for that additional uh, variability beyond what's expected from the Poisson. Uh, it's also not hard to fit a Poisson regression in a Bayesian context. Uh, so this shows you know, the, that full um, model of the Poisson data model, the log link linear process model, and then putting a prior on the betas. And we can write that out in standard JAGS or BUGS notation by having a prior on our betas. Again, we don't have a sigma term. We loop over our data and we have a log link to our linear model and a Poisson as a data model. Should be noted that the log showing up on the left-hand side of this uh, Calculation is one of uh, two cases I know of where JAGS will actually let you put an equation on the left-hand side um, 
of a calculation, the other being the logit used in the logistic regression. It's kind of a nice special case. You don't have to, you can actually write it out uh, in that natural notation. And then here we are seeing a, a graphical representation of the, the constant and predictive intervals that come out of this Bayesian uh, logistic, sorry, Bayesian um, Poisson regression. You can see the expected value in the solid line, the 95% credible interval around the model in the dashed line. And then we see this 95% um, predictive interval around uh, in, in red that's much wider. And it's worth noting that because the Poisson model can only take on discrete states, it can only take on integer values, the, the predictive interval likewise can only predict integer values. So the, the predictive interval jumps up in kind of a step fashion uh, when the expected number of uh, counts in the y direction moves up that next integer. So we'll see that, you know, for example, or this wide range from about zero to, to five, the lower confidence interval just stays at zero. Because there's a lot of zeros and that counts. And at higher values, that predictive interval uh, moves up beyond that. We we'll also see this natural tendency in the predictive interval for the, the uh, interval to be narrower when the mean is lower and to be wider when the mean is higher, again, reflecting the fact that the variance in the Poisson increases as the mean increases. <clears throat> 